Welcome to the Sky Podcast. Kenneth Cobbenpue on our show. Wow. The Kenneth Cobbenpue. <laughs> <laughs> how how yeah. does it feel like when somebody calls you like, oh my god, it's the Kenneth Cobbenpue. Like, oh, Kenneth Cobbenpue. From living a normal life relatively to suddenly being this superstar in the industry. Like, how does that feel like? Yeah, actually, honestly, I'm, I'm not really used to it. <laughs> I'm kind of, I feel always, uh, you know, even when people talk about me, um, you know, it's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I guess I've always been a shy type in that sense, right? That's why, that's why I'm into design. I'm not uh, acting or singing or anything yeah. like that, but I let my work speak for itself. Yeah. Yeah. But all like the pieces you have, we have one here, uh the the chandelier. Oh, yeah. The... yeah, limbo. Or Sia. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sia case okay, hanging from was that? Hanging on the chandelier. Uh, I know. Chandelier. I know. <laughs> so corny. Yeah. <laughs> but it really brings like character to the home. Yeah. It, like more a fun uh, element into, yeah. into the home. Yeah. It makes it less serious, less more adds character to the home. Like, yeah. I, I'm sure you've been asked this a, a lot of times before, but how do you come up with these types of ideas? I think it's about uh, about fantasy, you know. My inspiration has always been um, things that, um, a lot from my childhood. And, and I think, mm. you know, like, like that was inspired by the circus, you know. And I thought mm. of bringing the circus into your living room or, or dining room where you have these performers. Now. And... Uh, yeah, so many people have seen that the, the, your your chandelier, you know. So oh. all the way from Manila, they said, "Oh yeah, we see it in you know Slater's house." And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the first thing I think, you know, they all see. It's the first thing you see when you go into our house. Dakukayo in front of in front of our uh, on top of our dining room. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. my pieces, I guess, because they have so much character, it's always more like the accent piece in like mm. in, in like a space or a room. You know? Yeah. yeah, I wanted the Star Wars, pero hindi pumayag si Chris. I'd rather have Circus. <laughs> circus than Star Wars. <laughs> hindi kasi siya, I mean, fan naman siya ng Star Wars, pero I feel like not to, to the extent that I am. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because uh, I come from a very traditional Chinese family, and so yeah. all the furniture in her house was like typical, mm. I don't know what you call it, kind of furniture. Traditional. Like traditional traditional. Furniture. Yeah. yeah. And when we invited our parents over, my parents over, um, to this new house and they saw the chandelier my dad was like you're building an exhibitionist house what is this and then you have all the glass no all the yeah. glass the that glass. you have yes oh. yeah <laughs> how did you get started yeah, by actually um when i graduated well as a child i've always wanted to to make things no because I lived in a uh, in a house. Uh, the back of our house was all the people making all the furniture. Right. Mm. We had no factory. It was really like at the back. You know? So we were eating, and then the, the there were oh. mga people were uh, at the back like working. <laughs> so my so every morning I used to always play with all the materials that were around. You know, that's how. Oh. Yeah, and then I built things, I made things, and I showed them to my mother, and then she would always smile. You know, and then. Uh, it, it was always, it gave me joy, you know, to see my mother smile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, then I started to make things in high school, you know, design posters always, you know, and everybody would love it. So when I graduated, I wanted to say, you know, I want my childhood to go on forever. I wanted to take up design to make things that make people, people smile. happy. Yeah. Right. Smile. Right. And just exactly. Mm. And then, but that time, um, it was not traditional i mean it was not uh, it was unexpected for somebody mm. to take up design and, you know, i came from a jesuit school you had to be an engineer or a doctor or just, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <diba? laughs> so young father ko, he, he said um you know I, there's no money in design why don't you just take up uh, business first right. so i went to up up diliman i took up mm. business and after in the middle of my accounting class i said i can't take this anymore you know so i walked over to the fine arts department and said <laughs> i i want to apply and they said you have to pass an exam a drawing exam mm. so i we scheduled it and i went there and then we had this drawing painting exam and i couldn't draw well so i failed oh. i failed the entrance wow. examination yeah so 
Boy, uh, you must have regretted that. I got, <laughs> I got a notice. Na, you know, I didn't make it. I felt very disappointed. But ironically, around mga, maybe 15 years ago, I, they invited me to be their commencement speaker. At the same, oh. at the same, <laughs> the same Fine Arts College. Yeah. So, yeah. And then afterwards, uh, I had to learn. I had to take off for one year just to learn how to draw. You know? So I started late. Ma? Mm. This was already, I was already in college, bro. third year to change career. Mm-hmm. So I learned how to draw. And then I applied to uh, my mother's alma mater in New York. So I went to um, New York to the Pratt Institute and that's where I studied I took up uh, industrial design wow. and uh, yeah yeah and I graduated in fact with the highest honors yeah. so wow. Wow. so that was uh, thank you thank you yeah yeah but so it is very my... inspiring like you are kind of like one of the big names in the Philippines that the is biggest, promoting promoting like uh, design. design outside design yes, yes yes because there are not many uh, well don't think there's very, very few Filipino brands that are actually known abroad. Mm. That are actually, um, uh, there are people, of course, like Manny Pacquiao, like Salonga, you know, but brands yeah. um, that are in the luxury. You know, and it's I, very I, I hard mean, to get yeah, there. it's very hard. It's very hard to get there because when you think about the Philippines, you now sadly, for mm. this is my biggest, one of the biggest hurdles, you, when you talk about, Philippines to a uh, European, for example, they think of their mm. domestic, you know, their their helper, because uh, you know, right. they're everywhere. Yeah. Like they think of that's always the so. Parang it's hard to very difficult to associate luxury with uh, Philippines, the yeah, name. That's true. Yeah, uh-huh. and that's and that's sad. But so I'm always fighting that prejudice. You know, yeah. every day, every day when I go out there with all my things, yeah. I yeah, but to, your design, your design is super elevated. So, it's really nice and nakaka proud to be not only Filipino but Cebuana yeah. and Cebuano, right? Yeah. To have something like we're from the province, the <laughs> small island here in the middle of yeah. nowhere to them, and then boom, you have a Kenneth Coburn. Yeah. Right. So nakaka proud talaga. And like uh, even Filipinos are proud to have. Kenneth Kabunpoe pieces in their home. So, yeah, like, pinagyaya bang natin. Oh, like all the house tours I see, like this is a Kenneth Kabunpoe. Yeah, we spotted. <laughs> Remember that house we went to in Siargao? Um, ah, okay. The Reina, Reina House. Re- yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then yeah. in their sala, it's all Kenneth chairs. Yeah. Like, this is a Kenneth. Kenneth. <laughs> Iba dapat accent piece lang, bakit puro Kenneth. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think um, the best, me as a fan, I would say the best thing about a Kenneth Kobunpue is it still brings a lot of the Filipino into the z- design world. Like yeah. the way it's stitched, the mm. way it's made mm. together, the, the design, elements the that are weaving, used. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yes, yes, yes. The, the craftsmanship, all the materials, everything is uh, Filipino. Right? Even yeah. yeah. And, and the company is really 100% Filipino. Yeah. Like, we're, uh, Was it a challenge to kind of get your craftsmen to create these pieces that are so intricate, so different from what they're used to. I'm sure there was a lot of hesitation in the beginning, no? Like, oh, do you mean Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the beginning, there was. Yeah, there was. Because um, the first designs, parang, it, it was so hard to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They always felt, no, it's, this is too, too difficult. So they always wanted to oh. do something easy. But later on, when they saw it, when they saw how it was successful, how it worked, you know, they're so eager now to try mm-hmm. new things. And I have a very good uh, team. The first team yeah. that does all the prototypes and all those is they're very good. If you guys want to hear the full episode, you can check us out on Spotify. Spotify, Spotify, Spotify. Spotify. It's free, guys. It's free. See you there. Hi, podcast. Hi, podcast. <laughs>